What's up everyone? In this video I am going to show you guys how to install Remnix and this is a Linux toolkit that can be used for malware analysis. We're going to install it and we're going to take a look at what the uh, desktop interface looks like. We're going to also take a look at uh, some of the many applications, some of the many uh, binaries and utilities that are installed on this system. You can hide no longer. You now have the world looking directly at you. Up roll, red roll, engaged. I'm on the homepage for Remnix at remnix.org and we can see here that this is a toolkit that can be used for reverse engineering and analyzing malicious software. It provides a curated collection of free tools that are created by the community and analysts can use it to investigate malware without having to find, install, and configure the tools. Uh, me, myself, I love installing new tools and going through the whole process of setting them up and configuring them, but this is great to be able to do when you you know, don't want to do all of that and you just need to have everything and get it up and running as quickly as possible. And when you're done, you can, you know, delete or detonate your virtual environment and you can start over. So this is just a, it's a great option to have. And this is really a great virtual machine, especially if you're interested in re reverse engineering and forensics and things of that nature, because it comes with just so many utilities prepackaged inside of it that can be somewhat painstaking, time consuming and difficult to set up on your own. So in incredible operating system. I'm excited to delve into this a little bit. Now, there are other uh, ways to do this than the way that I'm going to show you. Uh, the easiest way is to download the Remnix virtual machine in the OVA format and then import it into your hypervisor, which is going to be VirtualBox uh, for me. But you can also just install the distro from scratch on a dedicated host or add it to an existing system running a compatible version of Ubuntu. And obviously, they also offer Docker images, making it possible to run them as containers without having to install the tools directly on the system. So you can run Remnix inside of a container or as a container. But the way that we're going to do this is going to be getting the OVA and importing it into VirtualBox. Uh, they have a really, really nice documentation for this operating system. So we're going to go over here and take a look at the documentation page. And this pretty much walks you through everything that you need to know. And it also goes into great detail about the different ways that you would use this and the different uh, tools that are installed on, on this distribution. And you can see over here on the left-hand side under the Discover uh, the Tools uh, section here, we have different, different um, sections for examining static properties, uh, statically analyzing code, you know, performing memory forensics. Uh, it's, this is a great uh, place just to get more information in general about some of these topics, even if you don't have this system or want to install this system. So let's go ahead and um, go down here to the bottom and get the virtual appliance. And I'm going to come back to some of this. So let me go ahead and open some of these up in new tabs as well. So I'm going to open up the configuration tips in a new tab and the tips for using the tools in a new tab. We'll come back to that. But I'm going to click on the bottom part here to go to the next page to get the virtual appliance. And as it says, the easiest way to get the distro is to download the Remnix virtual appliance in the OVA format, import it into your hypervisor, then run the upgrade command to make sure it's up to date. So we want to first download the virtual appliance file. It is approximately five gigabytes in size. And I'm looking for the virtual box OVA. So I'll click on that. And we're presented with two different uh, links to download it. We have the one that's hyperlinked as um, box, which is the primary. And then we have this SourceForge mirror. I don't really think it matters which one you do. I think I might have done the SourceForge mirror when I did this the first time. To save time, I've obviously already downloaded this. And likewise, you want to get your hash. So I will click on the VirtualBox OVA hash to get my SHA-256 
hash. Let me go ahead and copy that. I've also already done this to save time. I'll quickly go to the to the command line here, and um, this is the name of the image on my system. And I ran the SHA-256 sum command line utility on that image to get this hash from it. And then if I paste the hash that I just copied from the previous page, we can see that the hashes do in fact match. So we have verified the integrity and authenticity of our image, uh, AKA download, AKA whatever you want to call this. And now we can move on to the next step, which is gonna be to go ahead and import this into VirtualBox. So I'm gonna open up my VirtualBox manager. And this is incredibly simple, different than the way I've done most of these. If you've watched any of my previous videos or watched the series I put together that I basically call a fresh nose virtual box all you have to do is come up here to the upper left click on file and import appliance and then go into your file system to find where that image was saved for me it's going to be in my downloads directory here it is right here you can see that it ends in dot ova it's 4.9 gigabytes in size approximately now just double click that and that is pretty much all you need to do uh, hit next and it's gonna basically you know show you your properties here and we can take a look at some of this we can change some of this which I will actually change here uh, momentarily I will increase it from one CPU to four um, but from here let's go ahead and just click import now this is a image that is approximately five gigabytes in size and it's gonna create approximately 60 gigabytes of virtual hard drive space on your system and it has finished doing the imports so we can take a look here and just get a quick understanding of uh, what it has done for us and you can see right here on this line underneath storage that it has created uh, 60 gigabytes more or less in virtual hard drive space like like I referenced earlier in the video I'm gonna go ahead and click settings I do want to change a couple things um, namely in system I'm gonna increase the processor from one CPU to four CPUs and in display it already has video memory maxed out at 128 which is good but I will go ahead and enable 3d acceleration and I think that's pretty much it um, under general if you click on advanced you will see that it has enabled shared clipboard and drag and drop bi-directional on both and if that is something you do not want now is your opportunity to go ahead and change that I probably would change that uh, maybe not starting out but once I got something on the system that I was analyzing I would probably change these to disabled to make sure that nothing can escape the system but for now I'll just leave it as is so I'll click OK and let's go ahead and start up the uh, virtual machine X out of these little pop-up messages here at the top okay so immediately we are dropped into a, a shell we have a um, a terminal emulator that's open on the screen we're dropped into a command line however you want to refer to this you can see the username is Remnix and the host name is also Remnix um, this does come prepackaged with VirtualBox guest editions installed all, already so I should just be able to maximize the screen and as you can see it has resized the screen to fit the monitor and that's because of VirtualBox guest editions so that's another great feature that's already been taken care of for you um, I will just exit out of this uh, shell for the time being to show you what the desktop uh, looks like. There's nothing on the screen. There's no icons or anything. It's very plain, very simple. Um, you can come up here to the upper left, click on activities, and you have this uh, uh, dock, I believe it's referred to, that opens on the left. Pretty straightforward. We can show applications and you can see some of the applications that are installed on here such as burp suite cyber chef uh, cutter 
uh, Ghidra for reverse engineering, Network Miner, JD GUI for Android applications. But that's pretty much all you see. That can be a little deceiving because there's actually so much more on here than this. So instead, what I'm going to do is I am going to open up the terminal emulator again, maximize this, increase the size of the font here, and to show you some of the other things that are installed on this uh, system, we'll just cd into uh, user uh, bin, run ls, and take a quick look at some of the uh, binaries that are installed on the system. And I'll go into uh, user share and now I'm going to go into user local bin and ls and we can get a look at some of the additional things that are installed on this system that might not be installed on your typical system. So you can see we have Frida, we have uh, Man in the Middle Proxy, Man in the Middle Web. You know, there's there's quite a bit going on here. Um, you can see the uh, JDEX, JDEX GUI. We have Docker installed on the system. All of our PDF tools over here. So one of the things that I wanted to do to take these videos a little further than I have in the past is to um, show you how you would get some information about the system itself, like what type of desktop environment is it running, what is the window manager that you have installed on the system, etc., and uh, so forth. So there's a couple of different ways we could do this, but I think probably one of the easiest ways to do this from the command line would be just to um, go ahead and install a utility such as a screen fetch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do that now. Hit Y for continue. And while I'm waiting on that, I go to activities and I'm going to come up here and go to uh, settings. Click on settings and I'm looking for the, um, the about section here. Waiting for that to pull up. I come down here to the bottom and I click on about you can get some more information on this so we see that amongst other things we have a disk capacity of almost 65 gigabytes this is Ubuntu 20.04.4 LTS 64-bit uh, this is GNOME version 3.36.8 the windowing system it is using is X11 and I see that ScreenFetch has finished installing, so if I just run uh, ScreenFetch, this will gather information from the uh, command line and uh, print it out to you on the screen, and it lets you know that um, this is running Ubuntu 20.04 Focal. This is the kernel version, and it's using the Bash shell. Here's the desktop environment. This is running GNOME. Here's the version of GNOME. Here is what it's getting back for the window. Uh, manager and some additional things down here. Um, now I did see that Frida was installed on here so if I do which Frida we can see it's located in user local uh, bin Frida. I can do a Frida and then tab and it'll give me some additional options. And I can just run this on my system quickly by doing free to PS and it'll give me back some information on my system. Just nice to see that the stuff is working properly out of the uh, out of the gate so to speak and I know that Radare is also installed on this so if I do Radare we have Radare 2 and I'll just run that on um, I don't know I'll just pick a binary like user bin uh, top and we are immediately dropped into uh, Radare 2 and I can analyze the top binary by doing AAA and you know we can do a V and we can go ahead and take a look at the disassembled binary and we can start you know the reverse engineering uh, process and I can switch 
uh, views by doing P. So it's just nice to see that the tools are installed and they are, are working. And Radari is obviously a very incredible tool for uh, reverse engineering. So let me go ahead and just do Q for quit, Q for quit again. And I think the last thing that I will show is uh, we did talk about updating and upgrading and they have provided us with their own little unique way of doing that, kind of similar to how Parrot OS does it. And the way that you can do that is by running the command, um, what was it? So yeah, it was uh, sudo remnix um, update. And this will update the uh, repositories. And I'm running this in real time. This is the first time that I've ever done this. And it's taken a decent amount of time just to run the uh, Remnix update command. And I know that it's going to take a much more considerable amount of time to actually do the upgrade. So I'm not going to show that in the video, but I just wanted to actually make sure that the commands work and they do work. So you definitely are going to want to update and, and upgrade um, everything on your system. I guess maybe the last thing would be that if you if you want to get a further understanding of some of this, like I said, there's you know a great documentation page here that you can go ahead and take a look at. And if you start looking at, say, for example, this um, uh, a cheat sheet right here, you know there are links to all of these different tools. So, say for example, this this uh, Thug Honey client. If I want to know more about this, and I simply click on that that's going to take me to another part of the documentation page and it will provide me with you know more information um, on that if i go back to uh, let's see here i'm going to go back to um, the discover the tool section and i'll click on analyze documents and i'll click on pdf and it shows us all these different tools that are installed on the on the distribution that we can use for analyzing PDF documents. And it, it gives you links to the website. So if I want to learn more about uh, PDF tool, I can click on this link, take me to the website for that uh, tool. And I can read about that and um, Here's a link to a YouTube video, and you can obviously spend quite a bit of time going down different rabbit holes in learning about the different tools installed on the system and how to, to use those tools. So that's going to be it for this um, video. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, like the video and the videos. And my final words to all of my uh, good people, all of my friends out there that I have not I've met in real life, but we communicate with one another digitally almost on a daily basis. I have two words for you. Stay fresh. I will see you in the next one.